What is going on guys and welcome back to another Toronto Maple Leafs be a GM mode here We're gonna start season number four Five. So let's go ahead and look at all of our statistics. Uh, the first year we had this team, where is it? Do we, can, can we actually do this anymore? We can update the assistant coach or the medical staff. Uh, let's just go medical staff. Let's just get it all. Let's get it all done. But uh, here, so starting in year number one, we had the we had the Dion Phaneuf, Tyler Bozak, J um, Jonathan Bernier, James Reimer. We had the core of the team. We actually ended up going to the Eastern Conference Final, which I did not expect at all because we didn't. I mean, we had. A pretty good year, but I did not think we were going to get that far in the postseason, and we didn't. And then the two next years, obviously back to back Stanley Cup champions. Uh, this year we won 60 games, only losing 13 of them and nine in, in overtime. 129 points that is ridiculous. Uh, that was the year that we traded, um, that we traded Dion Phaneuf, and then Jonathan Bernier had that huge jump. And then this year we obviously won the Stanley Cup, and then last year getting bounced in year number one by Ottawa. So, would you call this team a a dynasty. I mean, back-to-back -back cups is pretty impressive. I'm, home. I'm really hoping for a big thing from this year. Hopefully, we don't get bounced in the first round again. But I just want to give you guys a little look at all of the uh, all of our years with this squad. So I went ahead and I edited the lines a little bit. I took your guys' comments, and there's a lot of uh, argument about Kucherov. There's, there's people saying, you know what, keep Kucherov on the second line. You know exactly what you get from him. 20 goals, 50 points. That's awesome. Awesome, you know, keep him there. He does his job perfectly. But then you've got a young guy, William Nylander, progressing nicely. He's now at 83. He's really, really quick. 95 acceleration, 94 speed. The guy is quick. His shooting category needs a little bit of work and his physical category, although he's not going to be, you know, the, the strongest guy out there because he's only 5'11", 181 pounds. But defense is not very good at all. But puck skills, skating, the guy is unreal. And I'm going to give him the shot on the second line. He got through his rookie year, you know, played two games in uh, 2015. Now he had one full year of NHL experience under his belt. Now he's going to get the second line minutes. And you're saying, well, then Kucherov is going to drop off like crazy, blah, blah, blah. And I agree with that, but I went ahead and I put them on the power play. I went ahead and took Chris Tanev off the power play, and I went ahead and put Nikita Kucherov there, because his shot is pretty good, 88 slap shot power, and I still want him to get the points. It's not like I want to take the points completely away from him, and I gave William Nylander, the, the second line right wing on the on the power play. So they're both going to battle for the second line spot. But then that leaves Rista line in out of the power play spot when he's got a wicked slap shot. So that may have to change. I can always alter it. I'm going to go ahead and put him on the four on four power play because he's not even there. I put Blake Clark there because he has a ridiculous slap shot. 96. Uh, his accuracy could use a little bit of work, but he is ridiculously fast. He's going to be a really good player for us come a couple years. I'm going to take Justin Falk off the power play play and put Rista line in. Uh, let's get him some first line minutes. I'm actually going to put him on some more lines. He's right there. The PK, Rista line in. He's getting a fair bit of ice. No power play time, unfortunately, but I think he's going to get a fair bit of ice where he is. So I think we're just about ready to start the regular season. Essentially have the exact same team as last year, except for Blake Clark and uh, Rasmus Rista line in. So he was the big fish in the uh, offseason who we went ahead and traded for, which I'm very happy about. We actually have a lot of talented wingers, and that's probably going to push Nikita Kucherov out of a job. Come next year, I'm hoping that Grigorenko becomes like a mid-80s, 82, 83 overall. He can play the third line minutes. Again, he was the fifth round pick in 2017. We moved up to get this guy, and he's 78 overall, 20 years old. He is going to be a monster for us for the future. He's a two-way forward, so I don't know if he's going to get to like the 89s, you know, that maybe another player would if he was a playmaker or a sniper, uh, but two-way forwards are definitely a great to have, if not the second line for sure, third line minutes for next year, and then that's going to leave either Goudreau or Kucherov out of a job, because Blake Clark's going to be jumping up, I know how good this guy gets, uh, so it's going to be interesting to see what's going to happen come next year, but we got to focus on right now, we're focusing on the year ahead of us, we're rolling with Malcolm Subban as our number one tendy, Markstrom's going to get the starts as needed, but let's get your number five underway here against the Detroit Red Wings, a nice little original six matchup here. First period, one to one. There you go. Connor McDavid, shorthanded, starting it off right. The new leader of his team, 89 overall. And this guy, I don't even know how to pronounce that guy's that guy's last name. Anthiasno? Anthiasno? 
Anthasano. I don't even know if I'm pronouncing that right, but 1-1 one, one after 1, second period. 2-1, to one, Zach Smith, two shorthanded goals. Detroit, what are you doing? Do you even hockey? Come on, there you go. Jake Gardner on the power play. Now we need to get an even strength one so we can have uh, two shorthanded, one power play, and one even strength. There it is. Nazim the Dream makes it 4-1, to one, and uh, we stomp all over to the Detroit, the Detroit Red Wings there. Convincing 4-1 to one victory. Had nine more shots, and uh, yeah, we definitely came through there. Two shorthanded goals. That's actually incredible. Johnny Goudreau actually had three points. That's that's pretty good. He's making a case for himself early on, but let's get uh, some simulation done here. I think that the only thing I really want to do is just win Stanley Cups. Obviously, we got to scout right and, you know, make sure our drafting is in order and have a team that we can put on the ice to play, but with all the prospects we have and the team we have right now, I just want to go far in the playoffs. That's, that is all I want to do. I think if we, uh, oh, Joffrey, <laughs> hold on a second here. Calgary wants to send Joffrey Lupel back to our team for a first round pick. He's 85 overall. He's starting to drop now. He's had some pretty good years in, in Calgary, uh, 50 points and then 60 points there, but we've had our time with Joffrey Lupel and I don't want to give up a, a first round pick for a 85 overall player and we do not need him. We traded Johnny Goudreau for him, so that was a pretty good deal on our part, but like I was like I was mentioning earlier, basically all needs to be done is just win games and win Stanley Cups because we have the team in place. We have everything in place to where we could be another, you know, two or three cups in a row. We have a really, really sick squad uh, up against Ottawa here. Ooh, they beat us again. We have uh, cannot beat Ottawa. They kicked us out of the playoffs last year and they come through here with a 5-3 victory. We lose 6-4. Come on, guys. We started off right with the one game. Uh, let's scout assignment here. I feel like we've got to slow things down a little bit. Let's go. We started in the WHL last month, so let's go with the uh, Q here. Only one first rounder. What about any defensemen out there? Is there any really good defensemen in the States? Uh, the OHL? No top fives? Wow, there has been uh, no players out there, really. Maybe a weak year for drafts? I don't really know. Uh, the States? QMJ? Let's see if there's any uh, defensemen out there. Second round, first round, no top five. I haven't seen a top five defenseman for a long time. Uh, any good tendies out there? I don't really want to scout forwards. That's all we do is scout forwards. Um, it's Russia. It's, this looks like a really weak draft, to be honest with you. Uh, besides from the WHL, there's a couple uh, first round picks. We can just go scout there again. Let's get a game here done against the St. Louis Blues. We've lost a couple in a row, having a kind of a weird start here. Come on, guys. Let's slow it down and let's go. First period. 1-0, fill the throw, Kessel. Second period. 1-1, one, one, uh... Ivan Barbashev there gets one, the rookie from St. Louis. He's going to be a really good player for the Blues. I watched him in the World Juniors a couple years ago. Uh, come on, guys. Where's the goal support? Like, Subban stands on his head, and we can't get him a goal? Get the guy a goal. Win it in the shootout at least. Oh, my God. Jaden Schwartz. Come on. Poor Malcolm Subban. Their goalie played amazing, though, stopping 44 shots. But I feel like Subban just plays amazing, but we can't seem to get the goal support for him. Like, one goal there... Four goals there, three goals there, two goals there. We won our first two, but now we lost our last four in a row. That's not good. If you don't, if we don't get a victory here against the uh, San Jose Sharks, I'll go ahead and toss Markstrom in there because, I, I, like I said, I want to give Malcolm Subban the majority of the starts, but I want to make sure we're going to be a competitive team. And starting three, two, and one through the through the the first six isn't the greatest start. JVR and Castle look like they're playing pretty good together. Four goals for JVR and four assists for. Uh, uh, fill the thrill, Kessel. Come on, guys. There you go. Big 4-1 victory. That's what I'm talking about. Get the victories now because I don't want to be a struggling team on the bubble, you know. I feel like since we've had those two back-to-back -back years that we're just untouchable, but we got to work our asses off here. Now there's going to be no teams that are going to hand us over in two points. That's what I'm talking about, Malcolm Subban. Only letting one goal in against the San Jose Sharks. Thank you very much. That's what I'm talking about, buddy. Maybe, needed a, maybe just needed a couple games to, you know, get his stuff composed 
Rose get his, get his stuff ready. Uh, 4-3 loss there. That was an OT, though. Uh, JVR, five goals. Kessel with six helpers. Through the, the first month, we're 4-3-2. and two. So it's not great uh, up against the Habs. They oh, kick our ass 4-1. Come on, guys. What is going on? Uh, it's only the first month, so I'm not going to freak out quite yet. We have 10 points. Uh, goals, we're not even up there. Assists, we're not up there. Um, maybe I should try something else out. Try some, uh, change some lines up here. How is William Nylander doing on the second line? Is he holding this line down? He uh, hasn't scored. He's minus eight. So we'll go ahead and put Coochie up, up there. Coochie is comfortable there. Eight points in, in ten games. I mean, that shouldn't be a problem at all. Uh, how's Blake Clark doing as well? Blake Clark has four points. The plus player. Uh, McDavid, is he not producing? Is he producing? Yeah, seven points in ten games plus five. I feel like the first line is definitely producing. Um, maybe just put Coochie back up there. Uh, we'll see how that works out for us for a, a little while. Because Coochie's comfortable with the second line spot. Um, after this game, regardless of what happens, I'm going to go ahead and start Markstrom because Subban's been uh, Subban's been playing quite a bit here. 4-3 win. Pominville for a first and some unsigned prospect. He's listed as a first liner. He's 35, though, 87 overall. Um, do we need Pominville? No. Uh, so I'm going to say no to that, and I don't really want to give up a first-round pick for Pominville. Um, let's give Markstrom a start against his old team against Vancouver. I wanted to start to win like four or five games in a row. That would be kind of nice. Uh, 10 5 and 0 for the uh, for the Vancouver Canucks having a pretty good start. Let's just go ahead and start Markstrom here. All right, here we go, Markstrom against your old team. Show them what you can do. First period, one nothing. Connor McDavid on the power play. Second period, one one. Uh, Nathan Pansel, I think his name is. Pencil there gets one. Uh, we're out shooting him like crazy. Come on, guys. Who they have in net? They have Jake Smith in net. Oh, Nick Bonino. Come on. Give me a break. 36 to 22, and we lose 2 to 1. What is this? Some Division 1 stuff in Hut? Come on. Come on, guys. We've got to play better than that. I don't know what's going on. McDavid with his third. I feel like we should have won that one. Let's give him one more shot here. Let's give Markstrom one more game. And we got to figure something out because this has been a weird start for our team and I I don't like that I don't know I'm just I'm used to being a you know a dynasty but what's wrong and you know, I really don't understand why we're not winning these games even towards the end of last year we really started to shit the bed and we lose four to one there I'm just gonna roll with Malcolm Subban I don't want Jason Pominville he's 35 years old big contract on him I'll pass on that one let's just give uh, Subban the start again I don't know man maybe just roll with the punches here maybe get uh, five or six games under his belt let's go to the first here then I'll end off the episode maybe you guys can give me some tips on what the hell going on here. I mean, 5-6-2, and two, it's not a very good record. Washington has an unreal record. 12-3-0. I feel a win, though, boys. Oh, I don't want Giordano, either. I don't want... Uh, maybe I do. No, we got Ristolainen. I'm fine. I do not want him. Say no to that. And up against the Capitals with Ovi and Backstrom, the both 100-point year last year, and we lose 3-2. 5-6-3. Come on, guys. Come on. Let's start thinking positive here. We gotta turn over a new leaf. Turn over a new maple leaf. Come on, guys. Let's just start winning some Hockey games. 3 nothing there. Malcolm Subban. I don't want Pominville. Get out of here. I do not want Jason Pominville. Uh, up against the Arizona Coyotes with a big 3-2 victory there. I think if we win five or six in a row, we're going to be fine. It's just we seem to win two and then lose three, or win one and then lose two. So the ratio doesn't really work out for our squad. Uh, Calgary 10-6-5. and five. Got a pretty good record. They're trying to offer us Giordano. And we shut him down 4-2. to two. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, big Western Conference swing here. We're uh, currently 3-0 in the West for this uh, Western Conference road trip up against the Avs and the 97 overall Nathan McKinnon. 4-3. That's what I'm talking about, boys. Can we go undefeated in the West here against the Hawks? Yeah, we do. That's what I'm talking about. Malcolm Subban finally getting his uh, his feet wet now in the year number 5 start. 3-1 loss there. That's alright. 12-8-1 uh, against Buffalo Division rival. Come on, guys. Let's pull something good here. Let's uh, get a big victory to end off the month. Oh, two one loss. All right. So our squad, I don't know. Buffalo's won the last nine in a row. Holy shit. Like we just won five in a row. Get out of here. What makes you think he's worth a first and a second? No, thank you. Like we won how many games in a row? You know, four, five in a row and we lose two, you know? So it really doesn't work out. Um, if we can go, I mean, 
It really just doesn't seem to make sense for our squad. Uh, forwards in the OHL now. Let's go in the O. It seems like a really weak draft. So maybe trading our first round pick isn't going to be a bad idea. But that can become uh, draft time. We don't have to talk about that now. Uh, big game against the Flyers. Come on. Let's get a victory here, guys. Let's... Ah, oh, 4-2 loss. Like, we just, we win five, then we lose three. It really makes no sense to me. First period against Tampa, 2-2, two -two, lots of goals going on. Stamkos and Drewen for them, and Leovo and McDavid, or Levo, however you want to pronounce his name. Second period, 3-2, Jonathan Drewen, shorthanded. Come on. This is frustrating. I don't know what's going on with our squad. I don't know what it is. Uh, nine, and we're gonna lose here. Come on, let's get a let's get a miracle goal for fucking D'Angelo on the power play. Four two. Ouch. Ah, this is a weird month. This is a this has been a weird start. Usually, you know, we start off the first month kind of slow, and then we pick it up. But that hasn't been the case. Like, we win five in a row, and we lose four in a row. So it kind of cancels itself out. Now we're nine, now we're ten, nine, and four. So I don't really know what's going on. I really wish I had an answer for you guys. Um, Palmerville for a first and a second. Get out of here. Palmonville is too old, and I'm not about that. Big win there in the city of brotherly love in Philadelphia. Up against Ottawa here. We need to get our revenge against the Sens. Come on. Revenge against the Sens. That should be our hashtag for tonight's game. Everyone tweet that. Revenge against the Sens. Come on. Ottawa, they don't have a very good record. Come on. Let's get a victory here, guys. We're playing pretty decent. You know, losing four in a row, winning one. There you go. Big victory. It's a confidence builder. That's a confidence building victory right there another one four to two there you go guys jvr has got 11 goals kessel's got 17 helpers mcdavid a plus nine smith leading in penalty minutes and obviously malcolm suban leading in wins as he is our starting goalie 19 7 and 3 for tampa bay shut them down boys let's go you're playing good hockey there you go two to one victory let's get our revenge against the sens again come on they haven't won since we since since we beat them about a week ago about a week ago a week ago Come on, let's go, guys. Four nothing. There we go. See, we just one, two, <laughs> three, four, five, and then we're probably going to lose four in a row. Like, it's really confusing how this team works, but I'm going to try to be optimistic here. We're 15, 9, and 4, so we've kind of picked it up. Uh, the Islanders got a really good record 27 and whatever it was. We win 3 to 1 there. Uh, Columbus has a terrible record. There we go. More wins, more wins. 17, 9, and 4. That's the kind of record that we should have. That is exactly the kind of record that we should be having. Right, right now, won our last seven games in a row. Can we make it eight against the uh, who was that? I don't want Palmonville against the Devils. We do make it eight. Can we make it nine to end off the month? That would be nice. If we make it nine, I'll be very, very happy. And we come on, come on, come on. Where's the simulation? Come on, come on, come on. I can't hold this breath forever. There you go. Make it nine in a row. That's the team that I know, and that's the team that I know can play that kind of hockey when we win nine games in a row. We're very streaky though that's what I've noticed we won that we won five games in a row earlier and now we just won nine games so kind of strange if we can make it 10 to end off the episode here Lupul do I have my first round pick on my trading block that might be the problem that's why everyone's coming after us with these uh with these ridiculous trade offers I'll go ahead and check that uh game against the uh Florida Panthers though Aaron Ekblad and Al Montoya can we win 10 games in a row let's go boys see a nice 10 10's better than nine and that's exactly what they do I got see my trading block though so I might have my first round pick up there because I can't see why they would be offering me these ridiculous trades yeah I definitely do I have all those on there so that's fine uh save changes yes and let's do a quick little wrap up here how everyone is doing uh, where are we? We're probably tops of the league now that we just won nine in a row. Yeah, we're definitely up there. Tampa Bay's having a hell of a year. Tampa Bay and Washington are both killing it. Uh, goals, we are not up there. Assists, we're not up there either. Uh, points, we're obviously not going to be up there. And wins, we're number one. And goals against average and save percentage, we're both number one. So if anything, it's our offense that's lacking, which is strange because we should be killing it. But I don't know. Uh, if Malcolm Subban 
man can hold down the fort, I will be happy with that for sure. Uh, let's check out the stats here. See how the power play is doing since I edited the power play and whatnot. Um, 29 and 4, not a bad record. Goals 4. Yeah, it's our goals. We've only scored 91 goals. That is 24th in the NHL. And that's so strange because we have such a sick offense. I don't know what we're doing wrong. Uh, goals for per game were 19th. Goals against were number one. Goals against per game number one. Uh, power play percentage is 14th, so you know it's about half. Uh, penalty kill is number six, so that's really really nice. Uh, 10 and 0 in our last 10, um, but home and away basically even. So it's not the worst thing. I just wish that our offense was producing a little bit more. Maybe shake up something with a move or a deal, but I kind of have everything in place to where I want it. And and if we can continue to win 10 games in a row, I'll be happy. Uh, goals. Points. Kessel is almost a pointy game player. 32 points in 33 games. JVR has 29 points in 33 games. So our first line, it's not our first line. It's our second line. Nazem Kadri, only 16 points in the last... Th only 16 points on the whole year. It's our second line. That's the problem. Kucherov's doing great. Where's uh, William Nalander? Nalander's got 10. Only one goal, though. You see, that's the problem. That's the problem. Either Johnny Hockey has to go or Con or Na uh, Nazem Kadri, you know? Oh, Kadri or one of them. Something's got to. Something's got to give. We tried to switch up the. Uh, tried to switch up the wingers, but Kucherov just seems to feel comfortable on the the second line spot. So I kind of don't want to get rid of Kucherov quite yet. I mean, Kadri lost his first line minutes now. He's not gonna progress into anyone better. So maybe we can make a move for Nazem Kadri. Uh, anyone a, a minus player? I feel like there's gonna be a couple. Nylander's minus fifteen. Uh, Kadri's minus three. And the thing. Of about Kadri is he was getting first line minutes last year and he only had 58 points and he was only a plus one so maybe Nazim the Dream is going to have to go maybe we can maybe we can deal him at the trade deadline or something like that but uh Blake Clark's only got eight points on the third line that's weird yeah it's definitely not Malcolm Subban's fault the guy's been killing it uh it's not our defense fault how's the, our defense even doing yeah our defense is putting up points 15 15 14 7 even even Matt Finn he's a plus eight you know, it's not our defense, it's our offense. That's strictly why we're losing games. So maybe Kadri's got to go if we can find a, a good second line center. I, the thing is with Kadri, though, is I kind of don't want to trade for like a really young player who's potentially going to take over Connor McDavid's spot. We could get a number one pick and a really good second line center for Nazem Kadri right now. You know, we could definitely go trade for this Kirk Sindhu guy. Obviously, I'm not going to do that because the Rangers would never give this player player up. I mean, I kind of already did that once with uh, Connor McDavid, so I'm not going to do that once again, but there's lots of decent second line centers out there. Like Ryan Strom wouldn't be too bad. Uh, 25 years old, still got potential. I don't think he's going to get to like 89, 90 overall or anything like that, but he could be a player who we could easily pick up. Uh, I'm just trying to look here. If there's anyone else that's, you know, still good enough to play, but not a ridiculous overall or not going to cost us like an arm and a leg. Like Granland here, he's uh, 26. Uh, he's not bad. I'm just trying to find the perfect player. So I've had a brief little look over the NHL, and I've had a couple players in mind. Uh, Gergensen's is one of them. He is only 84. I mean, he's 86 overall, still really, really young, uh, kind of a more grindy player, a two-way forward. Uh, not going to put up a lot of points, but he's a very solid player. And there was a couple other ones here who I wanted to point out to you guys. Uh, Kyle Turris and Evgeny Kuznetsov. Kuznetsov is 87. He could be like a first liner. Uh, he's got the red star potential, though, which kind of concerns me. Or even Kyle Turris, who's uh, 29 years old, just coming into his prime. I mean, he could be a really good second liner for us as well. Or do we go after a vet like Joe Pavelski who's got one year left on a six million dollar deal you know uh, we could also get a first round pick that's another thing I want to try to get a pick and I was looking at Braden Shen I thought he would be perfect he's kind of the exact same thing as Gergensen's Gergensen's is a little bit younger and look at all those minuses that really uh, concerns me so that's why I'm probably not going to go after Braden Shen I think Ryan Strom is a really good player and he could potentially be like 87 88 overall and have a really I think Ryan Strom's the dude four green stars 25 years old we could easily get that in a first round pick uh, for Nazem Kadri it's not even an unrealistic trade either uh, would that just go through we just make this happen right now uh 
Uh, Kadri for Ryan Strom. Kadri's 28. He's not going to get any better. That's the thing. And he's, I don't know if it's just the second line that's not working, uh, but I feel like if we have to change something up, this will be the right move. And he's got two years left on a uh, contract of $2.7 million. So I'm going to wait until the next episode until we decide to either make a move or not. But I think Ryan Strom and a first is probably going to be my uh, my guess as to what we should do. There's just no one really out there that fits the exact player who I'm looking for. Again, not a crazy overall. Marcus Granlin or Charlie Coyle, yes. Uh, Granlin's 26, though. He's a little bit older. He is uh, probably a better player than Ryan Strong. I wouldn't say he's a better player. This has the overall. Um, Mike Richards, he's a little bit old. There's just a lot of decent players, but I'm looking for the perfect player. So I already know how this is going to work out. Um, I think that's going to be after move I'm going to make. We're going to wait till next episode, though. Uh, I just want to go get Cody Eakin so bad. Best third liner ever. The guy's such a beast. Um, but another one was Ryan Johansson. This will be a move that we could make. Uh, they're relatively the same for trade value. Playing Johansson on the second line isn't going to really uh, do anything because he's listed as a first liner so again we look at the um, look at the New York Islanders and Strom's listed as a second line player Kadri's listed as a first liner playing on the second line again we'd be clearing up a lot of cap here Kadri is 5.2 for the next four years where Strom is only two point whatever for the next uh, two years so 2.7 for the next two years so so we're gonna probably make this deal in the next episode want to hear what you guys think uh, I know there's gonna be a lot of people telling me to go for go for Gergensen's, but I want to get the pick as well. So thanks for watching and I will see you guys in the next episode. Sorry this one was, was a little bit long. I kind of wanted to get a lot of stuff done and I want to put uh, I want to ask you guys' opinions on this on the Nazem Kadri situation. So he's not producing, he's got to go. I feel like that's our offensive problem is our second line and hopefully you guys can send me some good input on this. I will see you guys later.